Hello, good afternoon, evening, or morning, wherever you may be tuning in from. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to the Worldwide College of Arts and Sciences virtual open house. My name is Brianna McManus, and I'm one of the college admins here at Worldwide. And we are so excited that you could all join us today. We will be hearing from some of our amazing faculty and the graduate programs that we have to offer. We will also go over admission requirements and the benefit of pursuing a graduate degree and some student success and career readiness resources we have available to ensure your absolute success during your academic career here at Worldwide. Please feel free at any time to enter in any questions you may have into the chat, and we will do our very best to answer them during our live Q&A session, which will be held at the very end of the presentation. Um, with that being said, I would like to go ahead and hand over the stage to our Dean, Dr. Siechlag. Uh, Dr. Siechlag, please take the floor. This is a, a session in particular about um, the online, fully online, asynchronous online um, master's programs that um, and Riddle Worldwide is offering through our college, um, the College of Arts and Sciences, of, of which, like Brianna mentioned, I'm the dean, and my name is Alexander Sietschlag. Great to see everybody here. So we will be talking about the Master of Science in Emergency Services, the Master of Science in Human Factors. Also, we offer a graduate, an online graduate certificate in Human Factors, and then the Master of Science in Human Security and Resilience. Um, this is the program for this open house. Um, you can read it. I'm not going to read it out to you line by line. Um, Brianna already summarized it. But um, I wanted to, if you can just, yeah, if you leave that slide on, Brianna, I was just providing some context. So we have a new vision as your College of Arts and Sciences uh, at Embrittle Worldwide, and that is to be a destination college for multidisciplinary studies and impactful collaborative research as we develop opportunities for our diverse student population to fulfill their educational goals and become responsive, responsible leaders. And as you can see, this is mirrored in the kinds of programs that we that we that we um, offer because they really prepare you for careers and 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 success in making a difference to the to the world and to you know the communities you care about at a uh, local, state, regional, national, international, up to global level. And our focus is really on developing and supporting career ready graduates who are able to pursue successful lifelong careers that's what we are here for that's what we are offering and we also have concurrent research um, activities so um, the great um, one of the great things um, that come with our master's programs is that you not just have top notch faculty deliver it but people really advance the field in that respective areas, right? And then bring these requirements and, and um, bring their research discoveries into the classroom and also enable graduate research. And um, we also have partnerships with federal agencies and whatnot. So very, very interesting. As you can see, this is just a rundown of um, the university's graduate admission requirements to point out we don't require GIE scores, we allow we are very, very flexible with transfer credits. And um, we also have what other universities would sell already as you know special accelerated programs. But we are accelerated by norm because we have nine week long terms. And for graduate studies, we offer uh, one, two, three, four, five terms um, each um, academic year, which, which um, really helps you reach your goals real fast. But I do not want to... Um, um, uh, take any more um, of, of the floor at this point and um, just encourage you any questions put them in the chat as they pop up we can either collect them for Q&A but if they are immediately answerable we'll also provide you an answer right in the chat as we move along and with that um, Brianna back over to you Thank you so much, Dean Siechlag. And with that, I would like to ask Valerie Kisselhoff, our Senior Director of Admissions at Worldwide Campus to take the floor, please. Thank you, Brianna. Let me go ahead and share my screen here and get us started. If you'll just give me confirmation that you can see what I'm sharing, that would be great. We can see it. Okay, yep. great. So first, um, let me go ahead and introduce myself again. 
Valerie Kiseloff, Senior Director of Admissions here at Embry-Riddle. Um, I'd really like to thank the College of Arts and Sciences for including us in on this information session this afternoon um, or this morning or this evening, wherever we may find you from, um, to share some really great information with all of you about the graduate admissions process. So we will go ahead and get started. Okay, so as a current Embry-Riddle undergraduate student, you are likely thinking about the fact that you are close to degree completion, um, certainly an exciting time as you progress through your academic career. Um, as you're approaching degree completion with Embry-Riddle, now is the time where you can start thinking about what's next for you to take your education and your career to the next level. Uh, you don't have to wait to consider applying if you're thinking about a graduate program with Embry-Riddle. As a current student, you are able to submit your application even before you complete your undergraduate degree with us, which we usually recommend doing so within the last two classes as your application is valid for one year from your date of application submission. So if you're thinking about getting started, like I said, it's not too early to begin the process. We'll talk about some of the next steps and some of our admissions requirements. So for entry into our graduate programs, um, you might be wondering about how and where you might get started, which are all great questions. Uh, the first step in the process is going to be to submit your application for admission. You're also going to want to think about which program of study you're interested in. So you can review our available programs um, and determine what might be the right match for you based on your undergraduate degree, maybe based on your career aspirations. You can access our full admissions requirements using that QR code on the bottom right side of the slide. And to be considered for admission into our graduate programs, applicants will need to demonstrate a cumulative grade point average of a 2.5 or higher in their baccalaureate studies. If you have any college, uh, college credit at the graduate level, which you may or may not have, we would be looking for a cumulative grade point average of a 3.0 or higher. And while we don't require the graduate entrance exams, for the majority of our programs or those that are in the College of Arts and Sciences, if you're considering a program outside of the COAS, for example, maybe a graduate engineering program, you may find that the GRE may be required in some of those instances. But as a current Embry-Riddle student, we will have full access to your undergraduate record with Embry-Riddle, and we will be able to see your undergraduate degree and when it's been conferred so that we can easily consider you for admission to a program. So just keep in mind that the admissions requirements might differ between, between programs of study. If you have questions about a specific uh, degree program and what the admissions criteria might be for your circumstances, you can always work with your admissions counselor through the process who will be happy to help you navigate that. So once you've taken the most important step, which is submitting your application for admission, I'll kind of walk you through what the rest of the application admissions process is going to look like. After you submit an application, you can expect to hear from an admissions counselor typically within a few business days. They'll usually reach out to you to advise next steps, what documentation you may need to submit for consideration for admission. If you happen to be considering utilizing financial aid, if you haven't already filled out the FAFSA, which is the free application for federal student aid, you may want to think about submitting that so that you can kind of get ahead of the game. We've listed the code up there for you should you need it. But as a current student, you've probably also already added at era.edu as a trusted sender. Um, we encourage you to do that. Check your spam filter to make sure that you're getting all the correspondence that should reach you. Uh, you certainly don't want to miss out on some important information, especially if you're awaiting an admission decision, which usually comes about two to three days after all of your documentation has been received. After you've been admitted, the next steps beyond that, you'll receive an initial advising report that's going to outline all of your degree plan and what courses are needed. And from there, you'll also be assigned an academic advisor who is going to be a go-to resource for everything from planning your degree progression to enrolling in coursework, um, sourcing your course materials, and really everything in between. So it'll be very similar to the experience that you've had as an undergraduate student with Embry-Riddle. So I know it's kind of short and sweet, but I think you're probably familiar with us as an institution already if you're a current student. Um, what I do want to share is that if you have any questions about what program might be the best option for you, you're going to hear a little bit more about them today, but we encourage you to schedule a one-on-one -on -one 
applicant information session with our team. There's a QR code on the top left corner that'll take you to the online application where you can also schedule a call if you're interested. Um, when you do go ahead and submit your admissions application, you're going to want to use a fee waiver. You are eligible for the ERU grad fee waiver, which will waive the application fee for any students who apply to a graduate program within one year of earning their Embry-Riddle undergraduate degree. So some key information there, the QR code to the application, the fee waiver ties it all together. Um, really appreciate you joining us for this session within the overall session to learn a little bit more about admissions requirements. And again, if you have any questions throughout the process, you can certainly connect with an admissions counselor or schedule a one-on-one -on -one information session for any questions you might have. Brianna, I will turn it back over to you. Thank you so much, Valerie. Much appreciated. All right, and then with that, I would like to ask Dr. Deborah Bordeaux, Associate Dean for Student Success and Academics and Department Chair of Humanities and Communication. So hi there, I'm Deborah. I wanted to quickly talk about some of the student success initiatives that we have in the College of Arts and Sciences that you are able to take advantage of as current students and that you'll be able to continue to take advantage of in your graduate studies as well. Uh, first and foremost, we have Compass, our mentoring program. Um, Compass, as part of Compass, there is a research mentoring um, cohort that actually, actually it's a one-on-one -on -one with, a, with a mentor. If you are looking to up your research game in preparation for graduate school or to find out how to become research active, uh, look for those research mentorship opportunities. It really helps you kind of make that transition from undergraduate to graduate programs as far as kind of getting yourself in, uh, wading into the research pool. Uh, we also have our one of our newest um, initiatives is Equates, which helps with anything that has to do with numbers and quantitative uh, stuff in your courses, in your in your math and science courses. So right now there are a lot of support uh, videos that can help you out, but eventually it'll have a peer tutoring center as well as some professional development workshops. Um, humanistic STEM is our blend of humanities and STEM to give you not just the technical skills that you need, but also the other skills that employers demand, such as communication, creative problem solving, ethical reasoning. And we do have a humanistic STEM minor that just tells your employers, hey, I think a little, uh, I think a little differently. I'm able to not just do all these techie cool things from my program, but I also, uh, I'm, a, I'm a critical thinker. I'm a creative problem solver. Our Pathways to Success uh, program um, has a number of workshops on various student success components, such as time management, uh, how to set uh, goals for yourself and things like that. And then finally, our uh, vector uh, initiative, our virtual environment for communication, teaching, outreach, and research probably is going to be most familiar to you through its virtual communication lab where you can make uh, virtual appointments with tutors to go through anything at all, uh, whether it's a resume, uh, whether it's uh, work from your undergraduate courses, and then ultimately work from your graduate courses as well. So we have lots of ways to support you in the College of Arts and Sciences, and these are just a few of them. Um, additionally, and the program chairs are going to talk a little bit more about, about this when they get to their specific programs, but we have ways to combine your undergraduate program with graduate credits to provide a four plus one program, so it's an expedited way to get your master's degree. Uh, we have that for the BS in emergency services, where you can do a four plus one one program to get the Master of Science in Emergency Services, uh, and the same for the BS in Homeland Security and the BS in Interdisciplinary Studies. Those are our four plus one with our Master of Science in Human Security and Resilience, which Dr. Tan will be talking about in just a few minutes. Uh, so I just wanted to perhaps maybe give you, if you're in those programs right now, uh, give you uh, a heads up that you can, you can perhaps transition uh, into graduate studies and achieve achieve that master's program, a, a master's degree a little bit quicker than you thought. Um, so with that, I'll turn it back over to Brianna and thanks for your attention. 
Thank you so much, Debra. And with that, the stage is yours, Dean Siegelag. Thank you. So why is it important at all to pursue graduate studies? Of course, because you are intrinsically motivated and the subject matter excites you and you want to, you know, uh, gain more experience and everything, but it also pays, as you can see here. So um, advanced um, academic degree holders, um, as you can see, still um, make makes um, considerable more money um, and are more marketable. Um, than those who, who um, did not go beyond um, the, the bachelor's level. So this is very important. Um, um, and this is good data from the US Bureau of Labor Statistics. And, and that data, um, uh, in fact, speaks for itself. We also um, um, ask our some of our students, um, what do you think? What would you tell um, interested, um, you know, uh, peers, um, why it is important, or what it, what difference did it make to you as a, as a person, as a professional, as a scholar, as somebody, you know, uh, with aspirations to, to actually pursue graduate studies. And I've just picked one testimonial from, uh, from Jack Elise, um, because she is also in, in our um, 4 plus 1 or integrated undergraduate graduate program. So she is combining the, the upper segment of her Bachelor of Science program in Homeland Security with um, starting already as a as a as a senior, um, her master's uh, in human security and resilience. She also took advantage of our immersive um, research um, opportunity that we offer as a credit uh, earning research partnership with um, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security's Human Rights Violations and War Crimes Center. And um, as you can see here, uh, in the kind of orange box. She pointed out the exceptional exchange that she had with her student colleagues and her instructors. Um, she is now better equipped to do threat and risk analysis and contribute to the national preparedness effort. And based um, of that, she is also able to produce more defensible analysis and think critically to identify shortcomings and security gaps in, in the mission space in addition to her scholastic and her analytical ability that has been elevated through her academic experience with us. So very nice testimonial. And um, with that, um, we are going to dive into the three programs, one after each. But before that, I'll return it um, to Brianna. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Siegelag. And with that, uh, Courtney, Dr. Courtney Dan, it is all yours. <laughs> Thank you so much, Brianna, uh, for that introduction. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So, Brianna, if you could just please let me know if you can um, see in full presentation mode. Yes, I can. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, my name is Dr. Courtney Tan. I'm the program chair of the MS in Human Security and Resilience Program. And so I just wanted to take a few minutes just to tell you a little bit about the program. We also have a current student with us today, so she is going to also share her experience in the program, but let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the program itself. And so it is a 30 credit online program. Um, it is offered through the Department of Security and Emergency Services. Um, it's an excellent program for working professionals recent graduates who are really interested in the domains of security and resilience. So when you are learning in our program, you are really being exposed to some of the key issues that are, are these grand challenges that we're seeing in the 21st century, things like climate change, a global pandemic, terrorism, poverty, conflict, disasters, all of these send really serious shockwaves through our communities, through industries, through government. And so in the course of this program, you will learn about these, these key stressors um, and human security issues, but also really how to address them. What interventions can really mitigate or ameliorate the outcomes that we see in communities, not just in the United States, but globally 
what's happening in different countries, um, innovations that are really kind of transforming resilience as we know it um, throughout communities and industry and government. And so again, really just getting these key tools to address these 21st century problems. And so here, I wanted just to show you a little bit about just some of the knowledge, skills, and abilities that our program promotes through its curriculum. So these are in line with the industry demands. Uh, you know, we took a very close look at what the industry is looking for, um, job postings that are actually looking for, uh, for candidates with a master's degree in security and resilience studies. And our curriculum has been designed to deliver these knowledge, skills, and abilities. You can put these on your resume and you will be career ready to jump into a position after you complete the program uh, to really contribute to, you know, potentially a private sector, public sector, nonprofit sector position that really engages you across these different knowledge, skills, and abilities that you have acquired um, in the course of our program. So in terms of the curriculum itself, so here's just um, a, an overview of the required courses. So we have the Introduction to Human Security uh, course. It's kind of the gateway into the, the program itself. It doesn't have to be taken first, but it's a, it's a great kind of survey introduction. Uh, research methods, you'll take courses in international law, conflict resolution, environmental security, resilience, resilience planning and administration. Uh, and then the, the capstone course, which is kind of the culmination of your learning. But what's really great about this is that there's some flexibility and you can take two electives that are really well aligned with a specific interest that you have. Um, and then we also offer a really exciting elective, the Internet Security and Governance. And you'll learn about some of the key stakeholders that are involved um, in the Internet and, uh, and governance and some of the key security issues that we're seeing arise from things like cyber terrorism. So I wanted to take just a second. We have this four plus one pathways program. It's an excellent opportunity for undergraduate students to step right into a master's program. Um, so we have three different options. We have a bachelor of science in Homeland Security, uh, the bachelor in science in interdisciplinary studies, and then the bachelor of global conflict studies. All of these lead into the four plus one program and the MHSR program. So if you're interested in that, please feel free to reach out to me or your advisor, we can both help um, you talk about how that looks um, in terms of kind of adding just one extra year onto your undergraduate degree to get that master's degree. Um, and then you'll take courses um, like Introduction to Human Security. You'll learn how to use some kind of key data sets um, and be introduced to things like the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals um, in international law and security policy. Uh, you'll look at the annual threat assessment uh, from the U.S. intelligence community and really master one of those threats listed. Um, and in Foundations of Resilience, you'll learn how to use FEMA's resilience analysis and planning tool, which is a very powerful tool uh, to conduct uh, an analysis in a community. Uh, and then resilience planning and administration, you'll actually create a customized uh, community resilience plan for a, a city and community of your choosing. So that's kind of just a, a brief overview of the, the program itself. Um, and so I wanted to give um, one of our students who's joining us today, Miranda Bordeaux, um, just a second to talk about her experience in the program. Um, so Miranda, please, uh, uh, without further ado, we'd love to hear more from you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Tan. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Miranda Bordeaux, and I'm one of the current uh, human security resilience students. I am also working at the Department of Commerce as an international trade analyst. I really chose this program because of its global focus and impact. Human security is definitely something that I was interested in and wanted to focus on in undergrad, but I didn't really have that opportunity. And so now that I'm in this program, I really get to explore that interest and learn more. Uh, Dr. Tan already mentioned some of the classes that I found to be super interesting. The classes like international law and resilience planning and administration really helped me to build a solid knowledge base and, you know, it continued my interest and excitement in the program. 
So this program has also really helped me to be more impactful at work. Uh, this program has helped me deal with important issues and understanding things like uh, economic security. And I also feel like I've been uh, gaining better analytical and research skills as well. Um, these skills have really helped me to further my career at work and uh, especially because of the global focus uh, in the program, it's been very helpful for some of the trips that I've been able to go on uh, with my job. I've also really loved the opportunity to engage in faculty student mentorship. So I've uh, actually worked with Dr. Tan on a research project and we wrote a manuscript together, which was very exciting. And I got to present that uh, manuscript at the Midwest Political Science Association uh, last spring. I think that this program is just really fantastic and I feel like that it's really helped me develop my expertise in human security and continued to challenge me and excite me about the world of academia. Um, I'm going to stay on uh, and I'll be happy to answer any questions anybody has later. But yeah, really, really love the Human Security and Resilience Program. Thank you, Miranda. And thank you both Dr. Tan and also Miranda. Thank you so much for joining us. We absolutely appreciate you. And with that, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Ray Cheng, who will present on behalf of the Master of Science in Emergency Services. Hello, everyone. So first, um, can everybody hear me? So just give me a conference, okay. So yeah, so I want to introduce the uh, MS in emergency services. So we focus more on firefighting, fire service administration, and also uh, we are trying to aid the emergency management component into that. So by attending to this program, uh, we will equip you uh, to advance your career in the fire services. And also later, uh, when, after we aid the emergency management components, uh, we will equip you um become the like a local and a state or even federal level emergency managers. So for the career path, right? So uh, I do have some students working in FEMA, uh, which is a uh, relatively good pay, and also in some state and the local emergency operations center or their offices of emergency management OEMs. Um, so anyway, uh, for me, I, I do see um, this program equip uh, students to enter the fire uh, fire services and also the emergency management institutes. So uh, finally, I just want to introduce the four plus one program. So which means uh, for you, you can spend one extra year and get both master's and a bachelor's degree. And also um, we, to complete this degree, we do have the capstone research projects, so which allow you to have opportunities to work with professors uh, to complete your research program, uh, research project, I'm sorry. Um, so during this capstone uh, research project, you, you will have opportunities to work um, closely with a scholar um, and also present your your research project in any professional you know occasions okay so that's it um so if you have any questions i'm going to provide my email address on the chat box please feel free to contact with me thank you very much thank you very much dr Chang. and with that, um, I would like to invite Dr. Dennis Vincenzi, who will go ahead and present on behalf of the Master of Science in Human Factors. Hi, everybody. Uh, you can all hear me, I assume, right? Yes, we can. Okay. Let me uh, just try and share my screen real quick here. All right, is everybody looking at a PowerPoint presentation? Yes, the slides are up. Okay, so just to tell you a little bit about the program. First, the first slide here has uh, my contact information and the associate program chair uh, information. I'm Dr. Dennis Vincenzi. Dr. Catherine Moran is the uh, associate program chair. 
and we have the uh, catalog information where you can find the uh, actual uh, curriculum for the program. So human factors is one of these disciplines. It's multidisciplinary. It cuts across many different uh, industries, many different professions. And uh, basically, it concentrates on improving human performance while improving uh, comfort and safety uh, for the uh, operator. So it's the interaction between the human and the machine that we like to concentrate on. Uh, we make systems and machines and interfaces compatible with the needs and abilities and limitations of people, not the other way around. We don't design systems and then expect people to use them. So we start from the beginning and make it compatible with the uh, human. The uh, focus for uh, the human factors, Master of Science in Human Factors, is uh, to provide a foundational understanding and application of the core field of human factors uh, in terms of cognitive, psychological, physiological, human performance limitations, capabilities, and error. As I said before, it's a multidisciplinary type of uh, uh, um, degree and discipline. We're applicable to almost any field that deals with uh, humans and machines, civilian and military aviation, all modes of transportation, engineering, automation, VR, uh, robotics, unmanned systems, medicine, uh, any socio-technical system, any industry in which humans and machines interface. Some of the uh, salary ranges for introductory positions are on the uh, slide up here. Um, we've got, uh, I think these are 2019 and 2020 estimates. They need to be updated, but uh, you can see some of the introductory positions are pretty high as far as salary. Southwest, 146,000, Northeast, uh, 131,000. So they're uh, competitive and uh, People in uh, our degree program that graduate from our degree typically have no problem at all finding jobs. And the people that uh, take the degree, they're either working professionals already and they're looking to advance their uh, careers or uh, maybe they're getting ready to retire from the military and looking to advance their education so they're more uh, competitive in the job market. Uh, but whatever the case, uh, human factors is a an excellent discipline, can't go wrong with it. Some of the aspects of the program were 100% online, no in-person courses. We have nine week terms like all of the worldwide uh, courses. Typically the program is set up so you can complete the program in two years. Now that's an average, uh, that's what you should be able to do if you're constantly taking courses. Uh, of course, if you, uh, skip a term or two, then you know it's going to be a little longer. But two years is the average time. Our courses courses are taught by terminally degreed faculty with extensive experience in the field, and they address major roles and responsibilities of human factors, engineers, researchers, uh, safety professionals, etc. Some of the uh, cognates or two of the cognates that we offer are the specialist cognate and the research cognate. Specialist Cognant is a 30 degree uh, program of courses with uh, no culminating research requirements. So you take nine human factors courses, you take uh, one research methods and analytical uh, data analysis course for a total of 30 credits. Then for the more research oriented uh, or interested students, we have a research Cognant, which is three credit hours more, 33 credits, seven human factors content courses, two research methods and analysis courses, and then the research 700A and 700B courses, three credits a piece. The thesis course is strictly research. You design your own research, you execute your methodology, collect your data, and write up a, a thesis report. Some of the changes coming in August were um, to the uh, specialist and the research cognitive. Specialist Cognitive is still going to be 30 credits, but we're going to add a capstone or a culminating experience that we're going to integrate a research uh, and internship opportunity. Uh, the Research Cognitive still has 33 credits or still will have 33. Same course structure and format. 
we're going to integrate versions, our own versions, instead of the research RSCH 700 A and B, it'll be MSHF 700 A and B. So we'll have courses designed uh, for specifically for our students. Then we're going to research an internship, uh, integrated research, excuse me, integrate an internship opportunity. And as the program, the research cognate is still going to be very heavily research focused. The graduate certificate, the human factor certificate uh, is basically just a, a taste of human factors. We have four courses selected for the human factor certificate, 12 credit hours total, human cognition, human performance, ergonomics and biomechanics, and human physiology and adaptation. So that's uh, the human factors program in a nutshell. Uh, if, again, if anyone has any questions, I'm always available as a program chair. The associate program chair is always available uh, by email uh, and uh, you contact us. And we'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Santamsi, for that wonderful information. Um, and again, any students present, please feel free to enter in any questions you may have for any of our program chairs. Um, that way we can go ahead and discuss it at the very end at the Q&A session. And without further ado, I would like to go ahead and ask Robin Lothar, uh, who is the Executive Director for Academic Advising, to take the stage. Thank you so much for having me today. And um, as Brianna mentioned, my name is Robin Lothar, and I'm the Executive Director for Academic Advising, specifically with the College of Arts and Sciences and the College of Business programs. And today I'm pleased to present information on academic advising and the role that we play in your success as an Embry-Riddle student. So as a student with Embry-Riddle Worldwide, you may already be aware and familiar with our advising structure that you are assigned to a designated advisor who specializes in advising in your unique degree program and assists you from the time of your admission all the way through degree completion. Advisors are available to meet your needs and can be reached in several ways. We can re be reached by phone, email, or virtually through a Microsoft Teams call or even a video conference. You may be wondering, what can you expect from your advisor? And many of our support methods are outlined on the slide. And ultimately, our role is to be your main point of contact. We're going to guide and assist you with any of your needs or questions that you might have. We support students in many ways including mapping degree plans, ensuring that you're staying on track with your graduation goal. We assist with course selection, registration, ensuring that prerequisites have been met wherever they're applicable, and we can even provide resources on funding and scholarship opportunities. As mentioned previously, we have several four plus one programs. So if you're interested in any of the four plus one program opportunities, you're welcome to contact me directly or your advisor to explore these options to maximize your coursework and fast track your graduate studies. We serve as the liaison between many departments. And this means that even if we might not have all the answers, we know who to get you in contact with and we're always willing to help. So in a nutshell, that's what you'd expect from academic advising. And it's been a pleasure to speak in today's session and to have the opportunity to share some of the support mechanisms that you will experience with your academic advisor. I'm thrilled that you're considering pursuing your graduate program. Your success is our number one priority, and I look forward to the opportunity to assist you further. Thanks for your time. As always, thank you so much, Robin. <laughs> I, we definitely appreciate you. Um, and lastly, I would like to invite uh, Arnold James, who is the Executive Director of Career Services. Arnold, please take it away. All right. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure being here and always uh, great to uh, interact with our students here. Let me get my screen uh, going here. Give me a thumbs up if we can see that. Yes, we can. 
Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. So uh, you will hear some, some familiar terms as already been mentioned. Uh, and the, the most important one is probably the one um, that we use career ready. So uh, career services, which falls under our Dean of Students uh, office, we are committed to career success and career readiness. So our mission, as you see here, is to provide lifetime career support to all of our non-residential students and alumni. And of course, a huge chunk of that are our uh, military veterans, as well as those who are prior experience. experience. We provide uh, not only career strategies, but also uh, uh, so many uh, resources. And our, as I said, our goal is to correct is to connect uh, you with quality employers, but again, to make sure that all of you are career ready professionals. Um, as I mentioned before, lifetime uh, career support, that means that even after you cross the stage, uh, whether you're 95 or, or whatever, I'm exaggerating a little bit, just know that you can always come back to us, to our career services team uh, for career um, uh, assistance. Here's our staff. We we have uh, um, we have about seven staff members, including myself. I'm the executive director. We have uh, Ms. Rose Carlson, who's our associate director. Andrea Armstrong, who oversees our graduate students. Uh, we have a, a robust uh, co-op internship program, um, and we have Ms. Deb Goldstein, who handles most of that. Then we have three additional career support managers to assist undergrad and graduate students. As you know, things change all of the time and we just came out of a, a pandemic and um, the, the, uh, ec the economy and all of the uh, various industries, of course, go through changes. And of course, career services try to stay on top of those things and to help you, uh, whether you're transitioning, whether you're adjusting, shifting, whatever the changes are, we try to make sure that we set you up for uh, success. So we primarily look at four pillars for career su success. Uh, we, and we base these really uh, on the needs of our students at all times, students and alumni. Those four pillars are career prep, career development, as you've heard already, career readiness, and career resources. So the first one, which is career prep, as you can probably guess, is focusing on those things to help you to prepare to transition into either a full-time position or if you're transitioning between different industries. Those include always free resume reviews, uh, whether it's cover letters and then the ones we have in yellow just kind of um, uh, give you a sense of which one are probably used the most. We do one-on-one -on -one virtual career appointments, whether it's via Zoom or Teams. We do interview prep, help you to network. We have so many events for you to take advantage of and also to help you to make sure that you put your best foot forward with a digital profile. As I said earlier, we have a robust uh, co-op internship program. Um, this is for you to gain uh, even on um, great uh, hands-on experience with all of the uh, subject matter um, material that you will learn in the classroom. We always encourage all of our students, if possible, to do at least one co-op internship during your four or five years here at Embry-Riddle. I'm happy to report uh, a little while ago, or maybe between 2015 and 2019, we averaged about 20, only 25. Uh, that has steadily increased, and I'm happy to say that this fiscal year, which hasn't ended yet, um, we already have surpassed the triple-digit mark. So we are over 100 co-op internships, and I just expect for that to continue to increase. Happy to also say that for those who may be experiencing some type of disabilities, we also have a very unique and great program called the Workforce Recruitment Program uh, that assists them in getting employment by passing the, the, the uh, federal uh, system in order to even the playing field for those. Uh, this has been a, a great success, especially for our military veterans and anyone who uh, perhaps have disabilities. Our second pillar is career development. Many of you are aware of uh, various 
career assessments. You're familiar with the Myers-Briggs and uh, different other uh, assessments that you can take. We are also looking at integrating so many of those into career services, focusing on the various stages, um, career stages that all of our students um, may encounter. Of course, let's say, for example, for a military person who may be in stage three, and maybe they stay in the military for three, four, five years, but then when they transition from the military, uh, they have to make a decision whether they're going to stay in that industry on the civilian side or whether they would prefer to pursue a whole different uh, industry program. So in, in sometimes if they're switching to a different um, industry, they may have to take a step back to a stage two to learn uh, whatever, you know, uh, subject matter that they need in order to move forward again. So it's not really a linear um, um, progression. Sometimes it's a one step forward, two steps forward, one step back. So we take all of that into consideration. Our third pillar for career success is career readiness, as you very much have heard. Uh, years ago, it, I guess students sort of expected that, hey, as soon as, as I finish my degree program, I can hand my resume to a recruiter and they will automatically hand me a job back. Well, uh, there was an organization that was created because employers uh, were looking for a little bit more. So they partnered with the colleges um, and came up with this uh, organization that really took a deep dive into what makes a person career ready. And as our colleagues have already stated, um, uh, they came up with those soft skills that really makes our students career ready. This organization is known as the National Association of Colleges and Employers. So career, uh, career readiness is defined as those competencies or soft skills um, that students develop and demonstrate that employers are looking for. These are the eight soft skills. Again, a lot of these sound familiar already that they've covered in, and some additional ones as well. But according to NACE, these are the eight uh, that we focus on. Out of these eight, there, of course, are some that are even more critical, uh, communication, critical thinking, professionalism, and teamwork. There are definitely more, but here are the top eight as recognized by our career services industry. Last but not least, uh, career resources. We have so many resources that we encourage uh, our students to connect with career services as soon as possible. Uh, that way you, they can at least understand all of their options and uh, maximize their potential. Uh, we have five here. We will be adding uh, an additional one that focuses on the career assessments that I mentioned earlier. Handshake is the primary one. We also have career shift big interview, which includes AI or artificial intelligence to help our students job scan, interest drive, and there are so many more that we have. We also engage uh, with so many, and uh, it's not uh, limited to these employers here, but we engage across many, many industries in order to connect our students to employers. As I said, handshake, I won't dwell on, on this one, this is our primary career services platform. Uh, this is sort of what it looks like in order to make sure that we showcase all of our students to uh, quality uh, employers. Uh, many resources. We also have the jobs report that is uh, produced um, and distributed on a weekly basis, uh, which kind of sort of serves as a newsletter of so many different internships and full-time opportunities. In addition, we have a, a website for, us, for our students to access, as well as a career destination survey to kind of give you uh, data about where the top employers are, where our students are being hired, in what part of the um, US, as well as overseas, as well as what are some of the salaries uh, for different regions and locations. Um, coming toward the end here, again, career events, we have many of them. All of our students are welcome to attend 
all of the career events, regardless of where they are, who they, who may be sponsoring them, whether it's Daytona Beach, uh, the Prescott campus, and also last but not least, Worldwide also has a virtual industry career expo. Uh, the Worldwide, uh, the next event for Worldwide will be May the 3rd through the 4th, our virtual industry career expo. However, prior to that, Daytona Beach will host an industry career expo uh, on March 23rd. And I believe the Prescott Industry Career Expo will be on March the 2nd. So Prescott first, March the 2nd, Daytona Beach will be on March the 23rd and Worldwide will host their virtual uh, Career Expo on May the 3rd and the 4th. All right, so four takeaways as I wrap this up. We definitely um, encourage you to uh, engage with career services to find your personal strategy and to engage and find out exactly what your career path is. Uh, we have a robust co-op internship program. We highly encourage you to join a professional affiliation. And last but not least, as we work with our faculty members and even in the various uh, industries, uh, we tend to strengthen uh, our industry partnerships with Embry-Riddle Worldwide. Thank you so much. Um, Brianna, back to you. Thank you so much, Arnold, as always. Such a pleasure. And with that, back to Dr. Zuchlag. Thanks, Brianna, and all. Um, great contributions. Um, this is just a slide that drives you to the um, Worldwide catalog if you intend to apply or learn more about um, the also formal degree requirements, number of credits and 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 such. Thank you for, for putting that in the chat as well, Brianna. And um, the, the Embry-Riddle General um, in our landing page um, can be confusing, um, in particular when you want you know, to pass out what is in residence, what is online. So therefore, it's best to go to the Embry-Riddle Worldwide catalog and then to our College of Arts and Sciences programs. And there you would um, then um, um, see that information in a, in a uh, pre-structured way. So um, that's where I want to start. Um, and with that, that um, brings our program to a conclusion, but we will still stay on to take um, any questions that uh, any of you may have. And while you are thinking about your questions and once again, you could either leave them on the chat or um, ask them, um, you know, um, through um, the the microphone or switch your camera on or not. I'll, I'll take the floor in any in any uh, in your in your preferred form. But um, while you while you think about any questions that you may have, um, let me once again thank you for your interest in in letting us be your educational partner and thanks all colleagues for um, I know for a fact this afternoon over here at headquarters. So for, for taking this time during a Friday afternoon to contribute to this to this joint effort. Um, this is very much appreciated. Um, so thanks all for, for attending and for, for uh, contributing. And um, with that, let's see if, if there are any questions. Mm -hmm. And um, there are questions coming up on the chat. And this is great also, I think, for Arnold and Robin. Um, so um, thanks, Daniel, for that. Does Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University offer any kind of in-house scholarship opportunities? Yes, so we offer multiple scholarship opportunities. I'm going to go ahead and put my email in the chat, Daniel. So if you want to touch base with me and we can discuss the different opportunities, um, we could do that offline. And I'll be more than happy to speak with you about it. Thank you, Robin. Likewise, yes, there are some uh, scholarship opportunities. We work with our, um, um, we have someone that's on the Daytona Beach campus that forwards us many times um, scholarship opportunities. I will also mention that several of our uh, industry partners also offer scholarships. Sometimes that comes along with an internship or similar. So again, um, I'll also put my uh, email address down there and feel free to forward us up with us in a little bit later. Thank you so much. 
Thank you. And we also have out of the chancellor's office, so we also have some um, institutional incentive um, 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 funds to to just uh, support you in getting started with your with your graduate education. So please reach out. And the answer is yes. There are there are a couple of opportunities. Perfect. Anything else? Yes. Very welcome, Daniel. And obviously, we take part in all the the federal um, uh, programs, um, starting with and you know um, yellow ribbon and 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 beyond. So and we have in house experts to help you figure out how to um, um, uh, uh, tap your 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 um, service related benefits, for example, um, to to fund your uh, and co fund your 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 graduate studies with us. So Jacob, thank you. Being a full-time non-traditional student, how best would it be to redesign a resume to focus on security while still highlighting soft skills? So that's a great question. Um, I, I, I think in the first place, it also goes to you, sir, Arnold. Thank you. Um, absolutely, Jacob. And we sort of, um, I should say specialize in this, but uh, feel free to reach out to us again at that uh, email address. Uh, if you would forward us, you can either upload it to Handshake. Uh, and if you haven't already claimed your Handshake profile, feel free to send it directly to this uh, email address. We can definitely uh, review it and give you some tips and pointers. Very seldom uh, are resumes, you know, cookie cutter are the same for everyone. So we like to, to do a custom review for you and, and provide recommendations. Perfect, thank you, Arnold. And this is also, you see the flexible approach and the adaptiveness that um, Arnold's office has available in, in supporting you with your career goals and your career success. And then Tanya, there are also program specific offerings um, as you are pointing out in the chat. Thank you for adding that, very important as well. Any other questions? And also Vector, yeah, because Vector is our virtual writing lab and obviously Resume Writing is also writing, among other things. So um, this is one of our student success support components that were introduced by our associate Dean Deborah before that um, can also um, support um, you in resume writing. And then with uh, no industry-focused writing, then that would definitely be, be, be Arnold in the first place and then very good very good thanks thanks deborah for for pointing that out very important as well any any other questions any additions we also have um val mentioned that we have rolling admissions and um it is a straight forward process um there it's Maybe some programs, you know, that require or prefer GREs, but you know, for our three programs that we introduced, so definitely no GRE is required because we look uh, files are looked at comprehensively, and we don't believe that um, GRE and our fields are a great predictor for student success. So, um, as as probably makes sense now that you have heard about our comprehensive approach or holistic approach even to to student success. So. Um, Anything else? We have a, we have, thanks Deborah for pointing that out. We also are proud to launch our first study abroad program. And that's going to be the first in a series that is also going to be credit earning and um, either. At... You're muted. So yes. So we have our new study abroad program that we hope to make a series and, uh, or a series. Um, and we hope um, um, to see a lot of students there as we also offer credit, not only for undergraduate, but also for graduate programs within that. So that is that is very exciting. Um, the first study abroad will lead us to Europe, to uh, um, in particular security institutions, but it's also going to be a humanistic uh, and cultural experience. So pretty comprehensive, check it out. And um, in addition to internships, this is really something that enhances and then also uh, prepares students to be um, apprehensive, understanding, skillful, and successful across cultures. Very important these days. 
uh, in particular for College of Arts and Sciences, as you, as you can imagine, you know, this, our, our priority to prepare students uh, for that global and, and multi and intercultural journey that they're going to embark on in their ongoing or future careers, uh, or continuing or future careers. Thanks, Kristen, for encouraging your peers here. That's, that's also appreciated. Very good. So any, any other questions for us? Well, we are one minute beyond the hour, um, but all are still on. That is great. So I conclude from that. You found this time well spent. I'm excited to hear that. So anything else? Very good. Looking forward to seeing you and the application soon and in our graduate section. And um, I would be remiss if I didn't ask um, us um, to give Brianna, our moderator, a, a big hand. So great, great job. Thank you for doing that. And thanks all for coming. Thanks all for attending once again. Um, have a great rest of your Friday and then have a great weekend. And um, hopefully talk to you and see you again soon. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye, everyone. Thank you.